Well, your labs look good. I'm pleased. Oh, great. Um, Thank you for seeing me. So tell me what's going on since you had surgery on July 23rd. The third patient I've known for three or four years, she's actually the grandmother of one of our nurses. Your pain was very intense before right, the surgery. Right. So is the pain better? Oh, yes, sir. So the pain's gotten better. So you had your surgery, and I know in the, op in the, in the hospital you did well. Mm -hmm. I'm not progressing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, getting better. Now, I've been shut in so long. She has a panoply of problems. Most recently, she's had a pneumonia and she had a stroke while in the hospital. It's actually a good place to have a stroke, so it was promptly evaluated and treated. And she also has crippling arthritis of her right hip. It was agonizing pain. We tried lots of pharmacologic treatments, including opiates. Orthopedic surgeon did some injections, nothing helped. So she really needed a joint replacement. But here's the problem, she just had a stroke. So that makes her risk of surgery quite excessive. Generally, we wait six to 12 months after a stroke to clear someone to have an elective orthopedic operation. When I saw her about six weeks ago, I talked to her and her family, and she was miserable. And I told her, here's the dilemma we're in. Do we take this risk right now and, and try to do your surgery now, or do we wait? She opted, and her children fully supported doing early surgery. And so I convinced, um, didn't convince, but I cleared her for surgery, knowing that she's at increased risk. And she did fine through surgery. She's done real well. Except now, I think her problem is she's become fearful of falling. She went through rehab well, but her sons, who are two wonderful um, boys, that somebody is with her all the time. She's never alone. So that since she's been coming home, she's lost motivation. And she just complains she's weak all the time. Well, weakness as a symptom in an 80-something-year-old person could mean a lot of things. So I need to do a very thorough medical evaluation. That all looked fine today. And I think her problem is she's got some depression, which she's had for a while, which is now preventing her from rehabbing further. I thought you might be having some substantial bleeding, but her hemoglobin is 11.3, which is fine. It's not normal. Normal would be like 12. But she's not having any substantial blood loss. Her stool test is positive, but that test can be positive from the iron she takes. So I've um, motivated her children to keep pushing with the therapists. I've increased her antidepressant. And another option would be to get her some counseling and therapy. We have not done that yet, but that would be another option which I may reserve if what we did today doesn't help. Her granddaughter is a nurse, a very skillful nurse, so I communicate by email to her and keep in touch with her in between visits and make suggestions as we go along. Let me take a listen. She didn't have a devastating stroke. It was a minor stroke. And I said, you know, your risk is higher now. We have to just look at the pros and cons. What is the quality of your life now? Can you sit up just a little bit? Yes. Let me pull this up. She was in terrible agony despite being on strong opiates. Deep breath. She said, I just can't live this way. It's miserable. So uh, total hip replacement has about an 85% rate of completely relieving pain or markedly relieving it. That's not 100%. And she has had total relief of her pain. So she is glad she had the surgery. So I don't think that was a bad decision. And she accepted a, a small increase in risk of heart attack and stroke, which didn't happen, thank God. Um, and now she's kind of stumbling again in her rehab. And I think we need to you know, do a comprehensive look. Why is this happening? And try to move her along, keep her mobile, and keep her um, getting better. She wants to be more functional. She sees herself declining physically, and it's very distressing to her. What's your prognosis for her? I think my prognosis for her is still pretty good. I'd say fair to good. It's not excellent. She is, has a lot of comorbidities. She's still cognitively very strong. She's not demented at all. She has a wonderful support structure. Her two sons and her granddaughter are just dedicated to her. If there's a way for her to get better, she's going to. They manage her medications meticulously. They make sure she's moving and she's eating well. So I think you know, that's very powerful. The best predictor of improvement is function and support. It's really not their blood pressure or their FEV1 or their hemoglobin. It's what resources this person can bear. And I think she still wants to get better. Some patients you know, really don't want to get better. They kind of give up, and that's hard. But she's not at that stage. Also, your chemistries are OK. Your kidney function, your potassium is OK. I think what we might want to do is 
boost you a bit on this Remeron tablet, okay. which is a medicine for your nerves. Yes. You told me she this is 7.5, but you gave her 15 milligrams today? No, oh. so she was at seven and a half at the yeah. rehab. We had dropped back to a half of that. Half of 7.5. Before she had the surgery, we was giving her, you prescribed a, a whole one for yeah. 7.5. 7.5. She took it for about a week. And then, and then she got kind of dizzy and things, so All we right. cut. Well, we I don't want to go up to 15, then I want to go up to the 7.5. Right. Half of 7.5 is probably too low to do anything. So let's go okay. back to the full 7.5 milligrams okay. and um, let's we'll see how that does. Okay. Um, is she getting any therapy at the home? Yes, yes. they supposed to start today. But I think medically you're okay. Well, Your yeah. um, lab tests and physical exam look okay, but I think well, let's, let's see if we can boost up her Remeron. So well, depression is devastating because the, they don't have the motivation to go mm -hmm. forward. How do you deal with depression on top of all the other comorbidities? A treatment of depression can be remarkably effective. And I would actually rather someone have depression as a cause of weight loss and fatigue than cancer or something bad that I can't really treat. Depression is treatable. So if I see depression, I, I don't know, I like the diagnosis, I don't want them to be depressed, but I feel like this is something we can treat. At least I have a chance of getting this person better on. Um, I would like to um, just see how you do. I think physically it's okay for you to continue with your therapy. Okay. And I think uh, if we get you on the higher dose of the Remeron, you may get some of your energy back. Thank you. But let me tell you this, the good news? Yes. You came through a major orthopedic operation without any medical complications. Well, that's great. Remember, that was kind of risky because you had a stroke recently. Right. But you did, you did that real well. Yes. And now we want you to, get to continue to rehab and get back on your feet. Yes. The pain is better, isn't that good? Oh, yes, sir. The pain's much better. So what that tells us is that this is a good thing to do. But I would like you to keep working with your therapy. All right. And I think you're, it's medically safe for you to do so. And I think right. if we can give you the higher dose of the Remeron, you'll do better. I think it maybe I'll increase my appetite some, too. Yes. That's one of the side effects of Remeron. That's what I was thinking. Did you know that? My major job as a geriatrician, I think, is to listen and think. Listen, 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 and find out what's wrong, and then think, how can I really make this person better? And the way I think through that is, number one, can I do something that's effective? Do I have a treatment, a surgery, a counseling skill, a drug that will help this person, relieve pain, whatever? Number two is, what is the side effect of what I'm doing? How risky is it? The third thing is cost. I think we have to be sensitive to that. What is the cost effectiveness? And fourthly, is sort of the overall goal of geriatrics. What is going on with this patient? What is the big picture? What is this person's preferences, their social support, their comorbidities, their medications, their function? What is realistic? And so that's how I'm looking at this big picture. What's effective, the side effects, the cost, and sort of my gestalt on where they are. And then what I try to do is put people like, like in a category of vigorous, sort of average and frail, and then tailor my approach to that. You got people looking after you. Yes, so they, they keep my medicine dosed out. And it? so I think that's kind of the skill of geriatrics is integrative. Look at this big picture. What can I truly do for this person right in front of me who's not entered in any kind of clinical trial, wouldn't even be allowed in those trials? What can I do for this person? What's realistic? And then educate the family and the patient and make some choices and follow up. That's what I like about geriatrics. It's kind of thinking through these sometimes almost impossible problems, unsolvable problems. It's a pleasure seeing you. Thank you. I want you to get better, okay? Thank you. Thank and you I think, for everything. I think you will. Just keep working, okay? Yes, I'm trying. Right. Good Thank to see you guys. Yep. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.